helmet stays a helmet stays a helmet. Well, not quite. What's been welded for thousands of years dramatically changed within the last 20 years. Meanwhile, fighter pilots' helmets are the super gadgets in the cockpit with features generations before were only dreaming of. One of the best helmets in the world is currently developed for the Eurofighter Typhoon pilots. Its name, Striker 2. The fighter show will figure out what this new super helmet brings to the battlefield. So join me now. This is the fighter show with me. So guys, we want to talk about helmets and today we are here at BA Systems in Wharton and next to me is Blighty. Hi Blighty, how are you doing? Hey Flo, very good. Uh, now Blighty, let's talk about helmets. You are former Royal Air Force Typhoon pilot, now the test pilot here for BA Systems. You brought your currently own helmet and here we've got the new beauty, the Black Beauty Striker 2. Um, so what is the most important thing for a pilot when it comes to helmets? The most important thing, Flo, is actually protection. Okay. So uh, you've brought your uh, your Viking helmet here. Which so mine is, is all right. It's designed to protect. <laughs> when we're talking about Striker 2, what is the main differentiator? What makes it different to all other helmets that are existing at the moment? Okay, so what we've tried to do with the, the Striker 2 is take everything that we learnt about Striker 1 and improve the design. So the uh, the Striker Striker 1 it has cathode ray tube projectors. So these projectors are what actually creates the image on the inside of the visor. What that means is that the voltage that runs them is actually very, very high. That means that the cable to supply them, this cable here, actually carries uh, several thousand volts. So it's a high voltage line going through your head, right? Yeah, yes, okay. exactly, exactly. And so this cable is quite stiff. It's susceptible for, to fatigue and it can break. Yeah. And um, it also can be a bit restrictive when the pilot moves their head. The Striker 2 has digital mirror device projectors. Those need far less voltage. And as you can see, the cable that supplies it's those projectors yeah. is, is much, much thinner. It's much more flexible and is much less susceptible to fatigue and damage as a result. Okay, now these helmets are looking huge. So they, they look big and, and, and heavy, but are they really that heavy when you wear them? Well, it's, it's actually incredibly light. We've changed the design from a, a composite material to a carbon fiber material to try to keep it as strong as possible whilst also being light. And it needs to be light for when the pilot is under a, a G-loading. You okay, can, can I feel the Oh, that's weight. nothing. It's, it's, it's not really, not really heavy. It's, it's, it's very yeah. light. You're getting with those modern helmets so much information on the visor. Doesn't that drive you crazy when you're flying in the cockpit? There's certainly a lot of information, that, but the pilot can declutter that information. So you can select how much or how little you want to see. And uh, also what's really important is to get the design right. If you get the design right and the symbology is intuitive, you can add a lot of a lot of information and the pilot doesn't need to look at it all at the same time. You can simply choose what to look at when and be selective. What's the feature you love most about the new Striker 2? So the, uh, the feature I like the most is the night vision camera. So the, uh, the night vision camera is right in the center here. That's going, oh, that, to, that one. That's going to project an enhanced night yeah. image into the visor and it's going to merge that with the tactical symbology that I would otherwise see in the Striker 1. Previously I would have had to decide whether to use my Striker 1 and have situational awareness or use night vision goggles and have uh, be able to have an enhanced night image. This helmet is going to merge both of those capabilities. I need to ask you that question, it's a Top Gun question. Can I still wear my Ray-Bans with this Striker 2 helmet? Well, you, you can wear your Ray-Bans <laughs> up until the point you go flying, but I recommend that you leave them behind when you actually go flying. We put a lot of uh, design and development into this visor, so uh, you'll look cool with your Ray-Bans on, but you're going to have better situational awareness if you use the visor that's built into the helmet. <laughs> okay, Blighty, I trust your advice. Many thanks. I know that you now have to uh, head off uh, to your plane because we were squeezing that interview into your flight test schedule. Thanks for being at the fight show. Blighty. That's your fight to show patch. Thanks, Blake. Thank you very much.
Blighty is now airborne and on his test flight, the fighter ship crew will leave Wharton in the north of England and go down all the way south to the city of Rochester, where the engineers are sitting that are developing Striker 2. So, see you in a bit. This is the fighter show with Flo. Now we're here at PA Systems in Rochester. And guess what? I've got the latest prototype of the Striker 2 helmet here on my hat. So before we start talking to the engineers, let's go for some low-level flying in the simulator. So guys, this is Sabrina. Sabrina is working for the Striker 2 project since two years. Hi Sabrina, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Now, Sabrina, what are you exactly doing in the Striker 2 project? So I am an engineering project manager and I interface between the supply chain and into the technical engineering team here at Watch. And what's, from your perspective, the biggest challenge for managing a supply chain for such a super product like the Striker 2? So probably one of the difficulties is taking technology um, that was never designed for aircraft and for um, going on a pilot's head and turning that into the really highly technical equipment that we have in the helmet today. What is the coolest thing for you working for Striker 2? What's really cool about this program is being able to see what I do in my small little world and see where it goes onto a pilot's head and the impact that has on that pilot and the impact it has on the people around us and the world around us. So guys, here is the mastermind of Striker 2. Hi Nigel, how are you doing? Hi, good to meet Flo. <laughs> Nigel, you spent the whole of your career, so 20 years in the helmets business, that's true? Yeah, that's right. Started as an apprentice, worked through engineering, into management, now leading the team developing the Striker 2. So you're still enjoying it? Absolutely love it. <laughs> Great. Now, when you start developing a helmet, where do you begin? Um, it's absolutely key is the pilot protection. That's where we always start. The, the helmet has to protect the pilot during uh, things like an ejection event. Then we start to layer on things like the display performance requirements, the accuracy requirements, which affects the head tracking system that we have installed in the cockpit that understands exactly where the pilot is looking to provide the right information at the right time. Now I flew it just beforehand in the simulator and it's really brilliant, it's fascinating to have it on your head and you see all the icons in, in the visor. Now Rochester or BAE Rochester is famous for doing head-up displays. Do you want to get rid of those in the aircraft? It's definitely the way the world is moving and the technology is going. So we've got the capability now within the Striker 2 to be able to provide all of the information that would have typically been on the head-up display and that level of accuracy so that the pilot could use the helmet as a primary flight reference but not just going forward in a 360 bubble around the aircraft it gives the pilot as much situational awareness and as much decision making time as, as, as we can. Now you need to, to answer one question to me because I, when I was coming down to Rochester I was wondering uh, when you talk about helmets and you need cycling helmets, motorcycling helmets, they all do crash testing. Mm. They get smashed to get certified. Do you do that with a high value asset like the Striker 2? Yes, we do. No, Abs come on. Yeah, absolutely. No, in <laughs> fact, we've literally just finished, uh, we just built 14 new Striker yeah. 2s, and we've literally just put them through wind blast testing. That's 600 knots of wind blast testing. Um, and we're currently going through impact testing where we uh, smash the helmets at six meters per second onto a, a metal anvil to understand what the deceleration loads uh, and, for the And helmet. you, as an engineer, you're not there in tears seeing your, your Striker 2 crashed? Uh, a little bit, but it's all worth it in the end. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Um, one question, a Top Gun question. Can you paint the helmet? Pilots love paint, but unfortunately we do not. Paint is heavy, so when we're designing the helmet, every fraction of a gram counts. We are absolutely mass conscious all the time, and paint is heavy, so at the moment all of the helmets are black. We can dull it down a bit with some finishes, but all the helmets at the moment are black. Okay, good luck with the program, good luck with Striker 2. I think the pilots are waiting to have such a super helmet in their cockpit. Nigel, thanks for having us here at Rochester. And as everybody who is part of the fighter show is getting the official fighter show patch, that's you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having yes. us. So guys, this was the fighter show about your fighter typhoon's next super helmet, the Striker 2. And if you learn three things about Striker 2, then it's super comfortable, super functionalities, Super Helmet. Take care. This is the Fighter Show with Flo. May the Air Force be with you.